Okay, this is 5.3, and there's only a couple of concepts that I want us to talk about in section 5.3. It is determinants of matrices. Determinant is a numerical value of a matrix. So we can just jot that, jot that down so you can remember exactly what it is. Numerical value of a matrix. It's going to end up being just one number. So the determinant of a two by two matrix, this is matrix A, and you have four numbers, right, four entries. And we talked about Wednesday, how these little subscripts mean row one, column one, row one, column two. So these are just arbitrary entries. A determinant is denoted by absolute value bars. They look like straight bars. So straight bars of the number and straight bars of the matrix itself. To find the determinant, this is the key right here. It is A11 times A22. So basically these two numbers. This is product. So you multiply them together minus the product of these two right here. And just uh, these little subscripts are just letting you know which ones that you're multiplying together. Um, matrices are enclosed by square brackets. So when you see the di different symbolisms, you'll know what to expect. Matrices are enclosed by square brackets. Determinants are denoted by straight bars. So just straight bars, because we'll be talking about that more when we talk about Kramer's rule in a second. So if we want to evaluate a two by two matrix, I have like three examples. Find A with these straight bars that is telling you to find the determinant or numerical value of matrix A. So that would be negative three, eight, four, six. So to do that, this product is negative 24 minus the other diagonal product, 24. I'm not really sure who came up with these. That'd be a good research paper. So negative 24 minus 24, add them together or subtract them. And you got negative 48 for that determinant. It's just that simple. Now we do things with determinants. And we're going to do that in just a second with Kramer's rule. But you have to know how to find it first. Let's look at matrix B. If we want to find the determinant of matrix B, I'll just show that with straight bars. So 1 times 4 minus 3 times negative 2. 4 minus negative 6 would be? 10. That's where people have trouble right here with these signs. And one more time, finding the determinant of C. And good practice would be to pause the video and do all three of these again and make sure you get the same number. So 1 times 4. Ah, look at that. Did I write the same thing? No, nope, change the sign. 1 times 4 minus negative 2 times negative 3. So that would be 4 minus a negative times a negative is a positive. So that would be negative 2. So depending on the signs, you're going to get totally different determinants. So I hope that was pretty short and sweet. Um, the next thing would be Kramer's rule. You have to know how to find determinants in order to do Kramer's rule. So let me talk about this explanation a little bit. Kramer's rule for two equations in two variables. If you have a system, and these are numbers right here, b sub 1, b sub 2, c sub 1, c sub 2. They're just denoted by numbers, so you'll know what Kramer's rule is. Remember, your solution 
in a system of equations, and we're just going to stick with the doubles for Kramer's rule. You get an X and you get a Y. And this is Kramer's rule right here. This is your X value. This is your Y value. These Ds, these are just ratios of determinants. That is what's, what Kramer's rule is. So let's see what each one of these is. If you notice, both of them have a denominator of D. So what is D? It's simply your coefficients. A sub 1, A sub 2, B sub 1, B sub 2. So take that determinant of your coefficient matrix, and that's your D. To find what DX is, you take your constants and substitute in for your X's. So normally this is your X coefficients, your Y coefficients. So for DX, instead of your X coefficients right here, put your constants in place of it and still use your Y's. Instead of DY, um, in your Y value, instead of using your Y coefficients, you use your constants and leave your X's there. So that's kind of the process or what Kramer's rule is. But one thing to remember, if D is zero, that would mean your denominator would have zero. And you know we can't have zero in our denominator. So Kramer's rule does not apply if D turns out to be zero. So just kind of remember that. I don't know how many of those we have, but it's good to remember. So the first thing we're going to do in this example is set up our matrix. That's what I do anyway. So 5, 6, 7, 8. That matrix would give us D. And I guess, really, it, D is really a determinant, isn't it? So that's how we would work that. So let's see what that determinant is. 5 times 8 is 40. Minus 6 times 7 is 42. That equals negative 2. So that's D. We need to find DX. And we would replace your x coefficients with your constants and still use our y's. So negative 1 times 8 is negative 8. Minus 1 times 7 is 7. That would be negative 15 for d sub x. Okay, so we've got d. We've got dx, let's find dy. We need x back, but instead of the y's, we'll do the constants. So dy would be our x's back, which are 5 and 6. And then our y's we don't want because we're finding dy, so we'll do our constants, negative 1 and 1. 5 times 1 minus 6 times negative 1. Five, basically, 5 plus 6 is 11. So that is dy. Kramer's rule. To find x, we've got dx over d. To find y is dy over d. So let's see. What is dx? Negative 15 over negative 2, and dy is 11 over negative 2. And that should be your solution. So we would write that solution as 15 halves and negative 11 halves. Those are some horrible numbers, aren't they? So let's do a couple of more. I just want to do one more. So just kind of flip that page over. Let's find the solution of um, 
Let's do x plus y equal 4 and 2x minus y equal 2. Now, I know you could do it by elimination easily, but that's not what we're going to do. We're going to use Kramer's rule. If I set that up as a matrix, 1, 1, 4, and 2, negative 1, 2. These are the x's, those are the y's, and those are the constants. So to find d, we want the determinant of my coefficients. To find dx, we want the determinant, instead of the x's, we need to put our constants in place. And still use your y's, so constants and y's. And to find dy, we go back to our x's, and instead of using our y's, we use our constants. 1 times negative 1 minus 2 times 1 would be negative 3. 4 times negative 1 minus 2 times 1 would be negative 6. 1 times 2 minus 2 times 4 would also be negative 6. To find x is the ratio dx over d. To find y, the ratio is dy over d. So let's see what x is. dx is negative 6 over negative 3. I like that answer very well. x equal 2 y would be negative 6 over d is negative 3. That is also 2. So our solution, it looks like, is 2, 2. Let's see. 2 plus 2 is 4. That checks. 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 minus 2 is also 2. I like that one a lot better. 2, 2. So take this and do a couple by yourself using Kramer's rule and determinants, and I'll see you Friday.